Welcome to PNW Prop Stars, the only Seahawks only gambling show in the multiverse. I am your host, Clinton Bonner. All right, folks, we, we got we got everybody. You know what? We got we got the, the usual crew with us. And we took some lumps last week, boys. Let me first bring in the money line rainmaker from Montana, Adam Emmert. Adam and I took an 0 for 4 last week. Adam, how are we doing? We look at our wounds, bud. How are you? I, I refuse to accept the moniker, the money line rainmaker, when I make zero zero rain. Not no rain. Uh, no rain. It was a yes. totally sunny, uh, cloudless day uh, for my last week's uh, uh, bets. And uh, yeah, it hurt a little on the inside. It did. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, me, me, and you both. No rain. The blind melon song was, uh, I think, based on our picks last week, my man. Because that's exactly we we both we both took the golden sombrero going over for, for four. However, however. You know, it's, it's it's a collective group, right? We're all here together. And the Princetonian of parlays himself, Mr. Wilson Kahn, well, he swung big and he hit he hit at least one of those four. So once again, welcoming back the PNW prop star of the week, Mr. Wilson Kahn. How you doing, dude? Looking forward to my three-peat this week. I've got a great oh. selection lined up. So watch out, guys. That's it. That's it. He's, I said last week, the dude's on a bit of a heater. In fact, I said last week, the dude's on a bit of a heater when he made the selection that put him, put him atop. So why don't we quickly check out how did we do last week? You know, we, we did, uh, we did more than, than, uh, you know, foreshadow how that was, but let's put it on the board for everybody to see. So there we have it. Once again, Wilson is wearing the crown. He is the PNW prop star. And folks, with all the X's, no, it's not a game of bowling. Adam and I did not, you know, have four bagger there. We whiffed. So I didn't bother to put the minus 31, minus 31, because you should know by now, we're betting $31 a week. Wilson, why do we bet $31 a week in, in homage to? And in, in homage to a recent uh, Hall of Fame nominee, Cam Chancellor. That is correct, sir. That is correct. So 31 bucks a week. And to keep it easy for folks to follow along at home, bet one, bet two, and bet three are $10 bets. Bet four, the fail Mary, we know who that's in homage to, is a $1 bet that we like to let it ride on. The only rule is the fail Mary has to be at plus 1,200 or longer odds, meaning paying us more money. And as we can see, we pretty much had a really bad day, except... There is that one sneech, that one star belly right there. Seattle defense or special teams, any time touchdown. Wilson, have you ordered your Tariq Woolen jersey yet? You know, you recommended that right before the show, and I'm getting to it. Uh, not a DH Gate sponsor on this show, but I would recommend it if you're looking for some, uh, some jerseys based on betting performance. I've got 59 bucks here to spend, so could go for something high end on that website even. We'll see. That's right. You, you uh, spend, Hey, spend it all in one place. Would you kid do it? Yeah. Uh, but, but great job. So Tariq Woolen, the beautiful diving play, Mike Jackson scoops it up for our only touchdown boys, before we get on to the, the Falcons at Seahawks and start to talk about the game in the unique way that we do on PNW prop stars, Adam, anything about the San Francisco game from the betting angle that you're still like, you know, miffed about tipped about, or are you just ready to say, tear it up, dude, let's move on. Yeah, a couple things here. Number one, it says right here on the screen that it's Seattle D anytime TD. That's what that's what Wilson talked about. And now he's skating through with the victory with this <laughs> special teams. Bull Catfish! I, I'm calling shenanigans on this. I think this is an illegitimate win, and he's a cheater. I just want to go on the record to say that. And then, <laughs> and then he told me, he told me via text, well, it's also special teams because that's how it works in fantasy. Well, we're not watching fantasy. We're watching reality. <laughs> and I think this is BS and I take offense, but I take well, more offense <laughs> to the bet that didn't come through for me. The Gino throws more touchdowns than Trey Lance, oh. especially because Trey Lance left the game in the first catfish quarter. <laughs> Still couldn't get that one. That one hurts, bud. What one hurts the most for you, Clinton? That's what I yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, for for sure. So the one that hurts the most for me is my top right there. My my number one bet, right? Seattle getting 14 and a half and an under of 47 and a half. So watching handsome Jimmy G punching in for the one yard line to make it a 20 point ball game late. I said, you know, it, it was Paul Simon slip sliding away. I'm like, there it is. There it is. And I don't know, maybe when DJ Dallas decided to throw the ball or, you know, the other mistakes we had that were, were egregious where 
they just had to keep it within 14 and a half, 14 and a half points uh, at the end of the day. Vegas knew, but so did Wilson. He is our PNW prop star of the week, two weeks running. And boy, did he hit that one for a, uh, Again, you know, plus 800 means on a $10 bet, he makes 80 total payout of 90. And again, you take the rest of the money out, take the good, take the bad. He's up 59 bucks just in that week. Well done, Wilson. Good stuff. All right. So let's switch back now. Let's switch gears. Again, we go through three bets at 10 bucks a pop. And then we have our fail Mary. We, the folks who get honors, we started week one. We said, hey, bet one, let's go, let's go, you know, uh, youth over beauty, Wilson, take it away. And the dude has gone on now to win two weeks in a row. You still, you still got the tee box. You still got honors. Bet number one, Falcons at Seattle. What's hitting you, dude? Well, honestly, I don't really know what to make of this game. Um, I don't know what to make of the Seahawks right now at all. And when you have two not so great teams come together like this, I think my first bet is not a bad one to take. Um, the Falcons have been better offensively than the Seahawks so far this year, for sure. But even then, I'm inclined to take the result of the first drive of the game as a punt at minus 145, um, especially if the Seahawks have the ball. There's just I just don't see them scoring on the first drive. And I, I like this one getting off to a slow start, I think. Um, so, I mean, in lieu of really feeling particularly strongly about a lot of the player props. I'm just going to throw this one out there on first down. Hey, that, that sounds like a pretty, you know, pretty safe one, right? You're paying a little bit, but yeah, yeah I mean, the bottom line is a lot of times it is a, a first drive punt there. Now asking you man to man, who would you rather see get the ball first to try and win that bet? I would rather the Seahawks get the ball, not because, well, yes, because I think they're more likely to punt, but also because I want us to win the coin toss and get the ball. Cause I want us to be aggressive and getting, trying to get the offense going right away. I agree um, with that. I, I agree. I, I'd love, I'd love us to, <laughs> we got to do something different. We deferred last game and we held them to three, but it, it, it could have yeah. worked out, but, but I'd like us to, to try and move the ball early on. All right, Adam, for you first bet that's hitting you out of the gate. What do you got this week, dude? All right. Firstly, to comment on what you guys just said there, sure, um, sure. always defer, always, always, always. That way you can double up on halftime or at least have the opportunity to do it. And uh, I, I, I don't like accepting the kick right out of the gate. So I think you're both wrong. But, uh, <laughs> but my first bet actually falls much uh, in line with Wilson's here because I do think that the Seahawks aren't going to be gangbusters out of the gate in the first quarter. And so for me, mine is Seahawks under seven and a half points for minus 125 in the first quarter. So basically Ooh. just not two scores. If they score once or less, I'm good. Unless they score a touchdown or a two pointer, but that feels <laughs> unlikely in the first quarter. Uh, so that is that. my first down bet right there. I like that. That's a pretty, I mean, geez, that that's like over two scores would be coming out real hot, real yeah. hot. I mean, that's in uh, Vegas. That's a, I'm surprised it's even at seven and a half. That, that line is pretty, uh, pretty nice. And what was the, it was minus what? Minus 120. Is that right? Minus 125. 125. Yeah, that, okay. I don't want to speak too soon, but that kind of sounds like free money to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, so did plus 14 and a half last yeah, week. So exactly. So we, we, but, but I do like it. That's a nice creative bet. All right. I think mine is this one feels maybe riskier than, than I'm being paid for. Um, so I'm paying it's minus 110, And I did go to a, a particular player prop. Um, my reasoning is I think the cornerbacks from Atlanta are pretty good with, uh, with Terrell mm. and, you know, I think they're pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think there's other places we can attack. I'm hopeful it's middle of the field. And I hope we get a dude named Noah Fant going the yardage for the game. Over 21 and a half yards. That's it. 21. And a half. I mean, it's, it's, it's low. Vegas is not expecting much. What does that mean? Two and a half. You know, they're probably thinking between two and three receptions. Come on, man. Give me, give us three to four receptions, you know, 10 yards a clip, smash this thing. I'd like to see us get Noah Fant going. I got to believe at some point they're going to want, want to target him with, with specificity. So coming out of the gate with that one, Noah Fant over 21 and a half got to pay 110 to get it i don't that's hate an interesting it. one yeah I, I don't hate it i don't love it yeah kinda, I, that's kind of that's kind of how i felt too i was like i was at i was at a di i was at the detroit uh airport this morning doing these and i was like you know i know there's stronger ones that could come out with but i but i want to believe that noah fan's going to show up in this game 
because of uh because i think they want to get him going all right yeah but let us get to bet number two adam you're on to the second round down two you're up what are you digging all righty well this is gonna depend on what you're gonna let me get away with this week see i i texted earlier to see if i could take a head-to-head matchup but choose a, a falcons player which is kind of like rooting in this case uh for the seahawks defense so i don't know is that allowed is totally allowed? totally allowed. So totally allowed. The only thing you can't do is bet like Falcons to win on a money line or like Falcons plus one, like none of that. We're not, it's Falcons to win. No, a player prop to do, to beat, to beat somebody all day long. Have at it. Okay. Well then I, I really like this one. So it's cool to have more field goals than Myers at plus one Oh five. And I love this for a number of reasons. Number one, um, the Seahawks defense is that Ben don't break stuff. Mm -hmm. And you've seen, they've been really great in the red zone. And so they haven't uh, given up many touchdowns, therefore kicking a lot of field goals. And I, I, to me right there, that was, that was the best part of this. And I think the Falcons are going to be able to move the ball in between the twenties. Most people do against us have for a season and a half now. So uh, yeah, I think that uh, is a solid bet there because I think when the Seahawks get down in the red zone, they've been fairly decent. So when they get down there, I expect them to be punching it in. I do expect a Seahawks victory. And this is a bet for the Seahawks red zone defense. I like that. And I want to say our mind meld continues, even though we, we were over last week. I have a young way coup prop as my second bet as well. But this one slightly different. Got to pay 105 for it. So nothing bad. No, sorry. Plus 105. I'm being paid handsomely here. It is simply a coup over one and a half field goals. So a, a bit, a bit simpler, you know, versus the head to head. But same reasoning. It, ex- I mean, you said it like they will probably move the ball on us. Um, we've been stingy in the red zone. Those things equate. It's a nice day. I checked the weather. Those things probably equate to Ku getting three to four field goal attempts in the game. He's a pretty darn good kicker. He should get to dead simple with that one. So, so I think we're on the same page there. Wilson, what is your second, or if you want to, you know, comment on our our belief in the uh, in the in the coup meister there, you say say your piece. Yeah, I'm I'm on board with both of those. Um, we all know the Atlanta Falcons exist for one purpose, and that's to generate young way coup fantasy points. So <laughs> all over those. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, my second down. I'm fall. I'm going for a little bit of the sunk cost fallacy here. That is, I'm sticking with Penny two weeks in a row to go over on the rushing yards. This week, it's a little lower, 51 and a half at minus 115. Um, Frankly, I just think something's got to give. The Falcons are not a super weak run defense, um, but they didn't look great against the Rams last week. They have Grady Jarrett, who's a solid defensive tackle, but the linebacking core is definitely the weakness of their defense. And I think just all Penny has to do is just get to the second level a handful of times. Um, And we said that last week. The problem was we got behind early. And so we didn't get to run as much. I think this will probably be a little bit closer and Penny will probably get some more touches in this game. It would be hard for him to get fewer. He had six carries in the last game. It would be hard to get fewer. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you, if you hit it now, wait till you drive it. Right. And, and Adam, I want to toss to you for a second because hearing, you know, hearing the, the young and talk about, you know, it's, it's, we have just got to get more of those. Let me ask you, is the cure all just giving Penny more touches or was there, was there a reason that, Penny only got so many yards. What's your take? I think that they, especially in this last game, were afraid of the Niners defensive front. And they thought that the best way to beat them were quick throws to protect the young tackles and pass protection, but also too, they're going to have a difficult time uh, moving the ball against a pretty stout front. Now, with that said, I don't think they looked as bad as the yards per carry looked. Um, I think there was a couple bad runs there that offset a bunch of decent runs. I think that they should have a lot more success against the Falcons and they need to have a lot more success against the Falcons running the football. Uh, It's time. It's time to unleash Penny. And this is a great game to do it. And the Falcons are a middling defense. You should be able to run on them. We were able to run on the Broncos fairly decently. So I I think they'll, I think they'll have their way a little bit on the ground. And that actually reflects my next two bets. Yeah. All right. Very, very next two. Look at that. That's, that's awesome. Um, So I, my only difference in the take is that like, you know, sure the volume might, we, we need more volume for, for both Penny and Walker, just more in the run game, but our, our run blocking, it's, it wasn't very good. They were getting hit behind the line of scrimmage and yeah. making yards 
uh, enough, enough. Uh, so I just, it, yes, I want to see more of it too. I want to see them get it right. And you got to do it through volume because they, they need the chances at it. So I, I'm okay with the bet. I'm just so weary right now about our run blocking ability. Go ahead, Adam. And the one concern with the run blocking going into this game is Blythe's injury, right? He didn't look great throughout the 49ers game. He was getting walked back quite a bit. Yep. And I'm not sure Kyle Fuller's the answer to that. Oh, he's not but good. We're, Put me we're in there see... instead of Fuller. I mean, could, could, hey, maybe. maybe. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be much worse. Let's put it that way. And, and, and then we're being <laughs> yeah. then we're being parabolic here, but um, but <laughs> it is or hyperbolic, one of those two. But either way, uh, he's Fuller is the going into the season, looking at the active fifty three, and we're sitting there going like, really, like really, is he the good? He's versatile. Being bad at all positions <laughs> in the line <laughs> isn't versatility. That's just being bad. Well, so, he, and if you ask yourself, is he one of the 64 best people in the world at playing the center position? No I'm not way. sure no he is. Chance. No way. He, he's yeah. not. He's, he's not, not even the best so. fuller on the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. another, another true fact right there. All right, let's let us bounce to number three now. So now we're on third down. That means it's it's, it's my go right now yeah. until I until I win one of these darn weeks. All right, here's another one where. I kind of was taking, uh, you know, uh, some signals from some of your earlier bets, Wilson, earlier in the year. This one is Gino passing and rushing under 224 and a half, paying 120 for that. So passing by itself is like, it's like 215 or 212. I think it's like 212 and a half, something like that. Um, Gino will scramble, but not that much, not too, too often. Uh, you know, and maybe they'll do a run or two where it's the Josh Allen style sweep out and it's, it's a, you know, a, a carved out run play for Gino. We've seen that a couple of times and I like it. It's been, it's been effective with all that said, do I expect Seattle to move the ball more? I do. Do I expect Gino to be efficient and work, you know, work his, his, his progressions? I do. He did well against the Niners for what the calls were with all that. Do I expect them to bomb the, you know, bomb the thing all, all over the uh, field? I don't. I expect a Geno Smith game, high percentage, um, you know, not tons of yak and probably not any bombs whipped in there. So Geno Smith passing plus rushing under 224.5, pain 120 for it. Uh, Adam, you know, Wilson, you're up next. Do you have any reaction to it before you want to weigh in? Yeah, I mean, you know my tendencies, so I'm going to get on board with that one. I think it's probably going to be pretty tight because I think Vegas has caught onto the trend that Gino pretty much throws between 185 and 205 every single time he steps out there. I think it's going to be somewhere on that range again, and you might get lucky, you might get unlucky. But, uh, you know, he's going to throw six yards per attempt, and it's just going to matter how many, how many times he throws the ball because it's going to be somewhere in that neighborhood. So, yep, yep. Adam, Here's the way. Yeah, good. Here's the way that doesn't work. Here's here's I'm not saying that this isn't going to happen. I think it's a pretty safe bet. But here's the world that uh, exists in which Gino does get more than that 224. And that is the Falcons come out and play a lot of too high, just like everybody has done to us for a long time now. And they are able to run the ball with some efficiency. They start to bring that second safety down into the box to prevent against the the big penny runs and the big Walker runs. And now it's a bunch of single high stuff in Tyler and DK with one-on-ones. I could see Gino start to air it out a little bit. Like if they do run the ball with some success, that could mean some bigger chunk plays for Gino in the passing game. I will give you 10 American dollars right now. If that's, if that happens, I would gladly, that would be great. That'd be a and great if it outcome. Happens, I will take your $10 <laughs> and I'll immediately give it to you right back because it would be awesome. And I'd be really excited. about it. <laughs> nice. We've struck an accord. All right, Wilson onto your third bet. What do you got, dude? Well, um, some of you might not be happy about this, but I'm taking a Falcons player prop here. Um, I'm going Drake London over 53 and a half receiving yards at minus 120. Um, I think our young corners are developing. I think Woolen is specifically is, you know, take away the penalties, which I know is a big thing. That's like the whole, oh, if we scored more points, we would have won the game. But take away some of the PI mistakes. I know he's gotten screwed on a few of those underthrown balls. Mm -hmm. He's looked pretty good. Second corner, I don't I don't feel amazing about I don't feel amazing about the secondary in general. Josh Jones has looked if he's okay, he's looked okay. Uh, he's looked okay. I mean, it's just, you know, he's not Jamal Adams. 
Um, I think he said more tackling issues than, and that was just last game, than yeah. maybe some coverage challenges. Um, yeah. But not he got, I mean, he got beaten around the team. edge a couple times. Um, I think on that Debo run, he might have. I'm not, maybe I'm not remembering correctly, but so I, you know, all you have to do is miss one tackle and it becomes a big play. So I, uh, I also don't think the Falcons are going to target Pitts that much because he's on my fantasy team and I've been keeping up with it and he's just not getting looked at. I don't know why he's being used as a blocking tight end a, a bit too much, which makes no sense to me because he's basically just an oversized wide out. I think just a lot of, a lot of balls go in London's way and, you know, we tend to give wide receiver ones big games in recent years. I don't see he will have why he wouldn't get over 53 and a half. Um, feels pretty safe to me. It does feel pretty safe. That's why you're paying a little bit for it from Vegas's vantage yeah. point as well. When you quantify this for me real quick, if you're saying, you know, a, a decent amount of attempts toward, towards Drake, what do you expect? How many balls do you think he's uh, getting going his way? I think he'll probably get somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 targets and with that kind of volume, I feel pretty safe about him getting over 51 or yeah, I think it's 51 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I or think it's a pretty, 50, I think you said 53, 53 and a half. Yeah, that, that's okay. Half. But I, yeah. yeah, I wanted to see what kind of mental math you were doing there to get there. Uh, I think it's, I think it's fairly sound as well. All right, Adam, you're up on your third, but if you want to chime in, uh, of course, please do. Well, I'm pretty sure that PI yards don't cast, uh, count for receiving <laughs> yards. So, I mean, Woolen has been pretty stingy other than the PI. So yeah. That could be the one thing that would make that tough, but uh, you know, Wilson's got a point when it comes to making W one uh, WR ones look good, uh, this defense. And uh, so I like it. I, th I think he probably is going to strike gold there. Um, my third bet this week though, is for our own running game uh, because I do believe this is the week that they're going to really commit to it. And mine is Ken Walker, anytime TD Ooh. plus two Oh five. Um, the plus two Oh five part was what really attracted me there. I, those are, great odds for a guy who I think is going to get a lot more touches this week because he is another week removed from the injury and he is the more explosive of the two backs, I believe. And I just like the, the idea that he could rip one off. I, I think this is the type of defense he could do it to. So that was, that was mine for this week. Ken Walker, anytime TD. So what I envision is a, uh, a full house pistol formation, four backs the, in the background no. In the, in the you know, back there, some razzle dazzle. It's a pitch back, a pitch back, a pitch back three times over. It finally gets into Walker's hands and he careens it into the end zone to make you that money. I guess, how would we slice it? But maybe, maybe we could bury the trick plays within the 10 yard line this week. That would be maybe we That'd just line up. If you want to have a four, how about this? You want to line Travis Homer up at fullback and let him go smack somebody and like do his best, you know, uh, Mike Rob and hand the ball to Walker and try to clear it out that way and play some power football. Once again, sign me friggin' up for that. Maybe leave the Wildcats to the side and, and let the uh, let the professionals do their job. And speaking of professionals, we're tossing the, the fail Mary over to Wilson. Remember, this is the, the $1 Sunday scratcher. Has to be plus 1,200 hondo or longer odds. So, Wilson, you've already hit one of these, which is amazing. Week one, you hit the anytime Parkinson touchdown coming on the heels of uh, Adam's anytime touchdown. What do you got for your week three fail Mary? Well, um, tomorrow, as we know, we're recording this on Friday, the 23rd, tomorrow is the 10th anniversary of the fail Mary. Um, so in, in the fail Mary's honor, I am going even further than a fail Mary. This is a hook and ladder from the 10 yard line nice. uh, with no time on the clock. Stanford band is out, out on the field. The whole yeah, band's awesome. on the field, bands on the field. Um, I frankly feel like I don't know too much about this game. Uh, maybe it's last week, just all of us just getting completely blown out of the water betting wise. But for that reason, I'm just taking a shot in the dark at the final score. Um, and I'm going Seahawks 23 Falcons 17 at 6,500. Um, just felt, just felt right to me. Um, don't think we're going to score a lot of touchdowns. Maybe would have liked to go with a few more field goals for the Falcons, but Overall, it feels right. It's right under the under. Feels like a decent choice for me. Other than that, it I pretty much just went off of vibes, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, hey, which is the point, which is the point with the fail Mary again. Yeah, it, it's a plus six thousand thing. So you bet a yeah. buck to win sixty. You know, that's what it is. You got a gut feeling. Hey, you had a gut feeling about Parkinson and, and that hit for you. So all right, Adam, you're up on your fail Mary. And if you I don't know if you want to predict what you're gonna say about the game, but but Wilson kind of just gave his his game prediction along with his fail Mary. So take it away. 
Sure. Uh, I, I don't mind that this bet's called the fail Mary, but let's be clear. That was not a fail Mary. That was a catch in real time. It was a catch that day. It was a catch the week after it's a catch today. It was yes. the Tate's great catch. The, the, the tie goes to the receiver. That's how it is. And you know, why do you ask catfish green Bay fans? I'm sick and tired of hearing about the fail Mary. Like <laughs> it's not the fail Mary. It was the Tate's great catch. So uh, just wanted to clear that up. Uh, my uh, uh, fail Mary uh, <laughs> bet this week is for Rashad Penny because I do believe this is the week that they get after the run game. So Rashad Penny, two TDs nice. plus 1,200. And I think he's a guy who's going to have the ball in his hands a lot, especially around the goal line. There's a there's decent odds he punches it in twice. So just I'm doing the quick math here. You're You're counting on three Seahawks touchdowns by ground. Right, you want a Walker touchdown, and you want two, and you want two pennies. So, hey, it's a little what? bit, it's a little hedgy. That's, it's a that's little okay. hedgy. That's okay. I think. It's all right. I think yeah. that the, I think the run game is going to be emphasized this week. I think they're going to have success with it. I don't know which of the two backs is going to be the guy that really has the big day, but I believe one of them is. So, yeah. I'm, so I'm hedging. Nice. I want to see a penny first quarter, but just one to, to get your first bet. Then I want to yeah. see a, a, a Ken Walker third quarter and then a penny demoralizing fourth quarter. And, Love and I, I, I'll throw, I'll throw virtual money in the air when that one happens and make, make sure I text you. Cause, yeah. cause I, I like those vibes. I, I, I got a, a question uh, yeah, go about that bet. Does it, does it count if one of those is a passing touchdown? It did not clarify from what I can see. <laughs> now, what if he's on special penny, teams? What if he's on the, special yeah, teams all of a sudden, right? For the DJ um, special, I'd like to see that play come back this week. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. Boy. On that one. No, uh, I, I don't know. I assume that I assume that any TD counted that when I was looking at that. That's. I think it's going to be a side. touchdown scored. So if he happens to return a, a, a punt yeah, if he, for yeah. whatever reason, or to, yeah, but I think he's got to be the one crossing crossing yeah. the threshold to, for that Makes to count. Sense. Um, that's, that's how I, because I, you know, that's typically what it is. If you take a quarterback to score, that means he's rushing it in. Right, so right. I don't see why it would change, uh, for Penny. However, so no receptions. So no receptions, no, no receptions. No is receptions. Fine. He is can't fine. throw okay. the ball. Yeah. No receptions. Yeah. Is totally oh, okay. Good. I got you. I got you. Unless it was rushing touchdowns. I just, I think you took just two time, two, two touchdowns period. Yep, right? two touchdowns. So, that's what yeah, it you should be good. It could be a punt return. He could block yep. a punt return okay. himself. It will still count. So. All right. it's, it's it's all good. All right. So I've got a little penny action in my, in my fail Mary, by the way, I love the name fail Mary. And here's why, oh. because, because people know what it is and okay. they automatically understand that Seattle beat green Bay on that amazing Tate play. And it's going to be in green Bay's like, you know, face forevermore. It won't get lost in the shuffle because it's a great name. So as a brand, it just means screw you Packers. We beat you once again in, in the unlikeliest of ways. So you could kick rocks. So I, not you, Adam, but uh, the, the Packer nation. <laughs> I'll go kick rocks. That was, that was great. Facts, logic, week, and week reason right Week three and the, the yeah. tension's so I, already building. Yeah, I like yeah. the name Fail Mary. Yeah, I like the name Fail okay. Mary. Maybe better than my Fail Mary this week, but directly at plus 1,200. First one, I think, will happen. Falcons scoring more than 12 and a half. Okay, so very low. Low that down. Falcons over 12 and a half, a penny touchdown and a Noah Fant touchdown plus 1200. So I'm kind of combo packaging things being like, I think Noah's going to get over 21 and a half yards. We shall see. Um, so I'm kind of hitching my, my, my wagon this week to some Noah Fant success, but I want a little taste of that penny. Cause I agree. We will run the ball. You know, Wilson, you had, you had a penny one pretty much volume play with the yards. Uh, Adam, you're in for, for multiple touchdowns. I'm in for a touchdown. So why don't we just all agree that Rashad Penny ne needs to get in the end zone two times this game and we could all be happy. What do you guys say? We're all I'm in for a penny and, a, and in for a pound, it sounds like. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, yes, we are. All right, folks. So I hope everybody's been really enjoying PNW Prop Stars. Kind of the cool things is, well, that's probably bad grammar. One of the cool things is we're watching some of the metrics on the back end too. So not only are like the, you know, the audio listens and downloads going up across the board for all the programs, but also out on YouTube, we're seeing more traction with the gambling show and getting more comments and all, all that. So if you're seeing it out on YouTube, you know, like, like the channel, of course, youtube.com slash Seahawkers podcast, but the individual episodes, give the thumbs up, hit the bell. So, you know, when we're going live. It's been a great start to the season, even though the Seahawks are one and one, 
the amount of people that are now gravitating to what I always believed is the uh, the best of some of the best content, Adam and Brandon, the, the stuff you guys put out weekly, still my favorite podcast out there in Seahawks land, seeing so many more, you know, uh, ears and hearts get to it. It's been, been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. And I like this show. This show is different and it's unique and we get to talk gambling. And one of these days, Wilson will turn 21 and we'll celebrate and he'll <laughs> actually be able to lay some real, some real wood there. So, Hey, before we cut out Wilson, any last thoughts on week three or anything you want to you know sign off with? Hey, I'm just going to put this out there, guys. If you're on Adam's side, as far as the defense special teams go, <laughs> and you, you listen to my advice last week and you put the bet down on DraftKings and you didn't get paid out. Let us know. And then we'll take back the prop stars crown. I'm 99% sure that special teams was on the bet, but if you have, you know, contrary evidence, I'll retract it and uh, we'll all be the prop stars from last week. Wow. A um, shared tied over yeah. for four golden sombrero K fest. Yeah. Wow. A boy, a boy can dream. All right, Adam, what do you got to wrap us up here? But, Oh, Wilson's got so much to learn. Look, bud, when somebody challenges it like that, you do what uh, one of our former presidents used to do. You don't back up and be like, no, I'll take it back. You double down. You double down. <laughs> yeah. It's like, not only should it have been a special team score, it might have been, uh, you know, an anytime score, whatever. You just you double, triple down, man. Never back up. I think up. it was a blocked field goal specifically, actually. There you go. Yes, exactly. it was actually plus, it was plus, plus, plus 8,000. Plus 80,000. It was plus mm -hmm. 800,000. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not only did he get it right, but he got it right. Bigly. So, yeah. yeah. That's how you do it. All right, boys. And with that, there's only one thing left to say Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks.